Okay. Uh, good morning to everyone, and um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm afraid um, I actually shouldn't be here because um, instead of me, uh, there should be uh, one of my ministers who is uh, also my boss. But unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, we organized here in Catalonia a referendum just uh, one month ago, and uh, some of my bosses are in jail for that purpose. So, uh, so it's uh, my time uh, now. Um, so these are my ministers, so in solidarity with them, I will do this presentation. So let me just give you a few remarks uh, on, um, on Catalonia. We are uh, more or less 8 million people uh, population, so the, the size similar of Austria. Uh, more or less the size in terms of size uh, in square kilometers of Denmark. And um, we have a, a gross domestic product of uh, more or less similar to the one that uh, has Israel. So that's, that's our current uh, situation, and this is why we want to become uh, a smart nation. I think we, we, have, we have the uh, tools for becoming that. Actually, we are, as you all may know, um, we are involved, all the world, in a real internet evolution. We've seen that over the past years. We've seen how the number of connected devices uh, has increased uh, exponentially. And uh, after uh, transforming from what it was an Internet of Information, we are now uh, heading up to the Internet of Things. So everything will be connected. That means that will change everything. Actually, some of the technologies that will change our society, our countries, our cities, uh, you can see them here. They are smart technologies from uh, big data to drones to smart robots to 3D printing, all these technologies will uh, change the way we've been as a society. So we are coming from an industrial society and we will go to a digital society. And that has come to stay and we have to bear that in mind, not only local governments but also regional and national governments. Actually, you may know this guy, he's Abraham Maslow. He was an American um, um, philosopher. He um, defined the, the pyramid of human needs. So he said that, um, actually, uh, he made a theory. He said that after uh, drinking, uh, having uh, water, having access to food and shelter, uh, then uh, we need to have security. And, uh, and all, uh, he defined all the levels of human needs, basic human needs we need in order to be able to develop as humans and as a society. I think that, that he, if he was alive today, he would have to modify his theory and uh, introduce two new levels in his pyramid. And that's to have battery and Wi-Fi. That's become uh, the most essential things uh, right now for all of us. So, uh, and that's really, really changing everything. So we must, we must bear in mind that thing. Actually, this revolution is based on knowledge and skills rather than on raw materials. This is uh, typical from Catalonia, human castles. We all gather together and make these beautiful structures. These beautiful structures can only be made with collaboration, with a lot of intelligence, uh, rather than strength. And, uh, and that's a, a thing I think uh, it's uh, very needed in this new digital society we are heading to. And, uh, and if all that doesn't work for Catalonia, then we always have this guy, uh, the smartest footballer. Uh, he uh, obviously will help us in that issue. So we have also some threats. And uh, we've seen that uh, technology can kill jobs, but it will kill jobs on the uh, traditional industries that need to be transformed. All revolutions have killed jobs, and this will also do it. But this means we need to be able to transform these jobs to, um, to, other, uh, to the digital uh, economy. Actually, the European Commission um, has set also some goals and has uh, defined for 2020 uh, that uh, smart growth will depend on three main issues, education, research, and innovation, and digital society. So we must be aware of that. We must put our efforts on those topics. This is why in Catalonia we approved a uh, 
national strategy in 2014. We saw that our cities were starting to develop smart city projects. We needed to coordinate them. We needed to uh, have also strategy for all those issues which doesn't happen or don't happen only in cities or that the cities don't have the competencies. So we decided to define a strategy for whole Catalonia. Actually presented that strategy in Brussels with Marco Marcula, who is the president of the Committee of Regions. And, uh, and we are proud that we already have been working for uh, this strategy for three years already. What was the first decision we took? Leadership. We decided that this strategy would be led by our prime minister. So my secretary uh, shifted from another department to the presidential department, and uh, it depended directly on the presidency of Catalonia. So we defined the strategy, and this strategy had uh, four main lines of action. One was obviously the deployment of infrastructures, digital infrastructures, very important. There is no digital society with uh, digital infrastructures. The second issue was obviously digitalization pol policies in all areas of the country. And the third issue, which is a very, um, it's the topic right now, it's obviously we need to make secure this digital world. If we don't make it secure, people won't trust it. If they don't trust it, not only people, companies, they won't use it. If they don't use it, we will not be competitive enough in this, uh, in this new digital era. And obviously, we need also to do research and innovation in all those three areas. This is important in order to be able to build the ecosystem that can give us in the near future with the right tools for dealing with the digital society. Actually, the program that has already three years, you can see here, it's trying to handle and tackle uh, every aspect of our society from the government to the economy to the, to the territory. We have the citizen in the middle. Empowering citizens is the issue as well. 97% um, of our citizens have one of these tools in their pockets. I call them mass creation weapons, and they can help us in uh, really defining the policies of the future. Citizens can be decision makers, and they can be real actors in this new society. So we need to, I would say, not use them, but we need to ask them to participate in helping us on defining all these issues. As I said, I'm just going to go through very quickly to some of the things. Infrastructures, we've built a neutral broadband network in Catalonia, more than 3,500 kilometers over the past years. Neutral, it means that any operator can use it, and that helps that uh, we can give um, broadband access to our citizens everywhere they are, not only in high populated cities in which operators, the market is already working, but in those places where the market is not working, we are trying to accelerate the process so that we don't have first class, second class citizens in Catalonia in terms of, in terms of uh, accessing the network. Obviously empowering citizens, as I said, making them decision makers, let them make, uh, share the data so that the data can be shared, obviously with privacy and protecting fundamental uh, rights of our citizens. But uh, I think we can learn a lot from, um, from uh, what is happening in our society, and that data can be very useful. Um, so I, I don't have much time to go through the whole strategy, so I will just uh, explain that obviously boosting our smart cities, helping our mayors, coordinating our cities. We don't want to have isolated smart cities. We want connected smart cities. And we can do that job from the national government, from uh, regional governments. Uh, one of the uh, uh, objectives is also to coordinate experiences not for not reinventing the wheel, for uh, seeking for those failure projects so that they don't get repeated in other cities. That's one of the, of the, also of the purposes of this strategy. Fostering uh, our education, these will be the workers of our future. Uh, a lot of the jobs will be in those areas. So we need to start from schools to uh, really introduce STEM coding and robotics uh, in, in, that, uh, in, in, in the schools. So, since I don't have much time, uh, I'll just go to the end of my presentation. But these are some of the areas in which we are working, from smart rural grids to, uh, to mobility, um, culture and tourism. So just to end my presentation, I just want to say that uh, I think that uh, we are not doing that bad so far. Uh, Barcelona in 2016 was uh, the second smartest city in the world after Singapore. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, uh, let's see what happens this year. So uh, I think we're on the, on the right path, uh, and we want to uh, continue on this on this uh, on this track. Actually, the European Commission has a, an indicator for um, what we believe will be a very powerful economy in the near future, which is the data economy. Uh, we've been positioned quite well in terms of uh, new uh, companies, um, in terms of uh, big data or data companies that their business is uh, regarding the, the usage of data, the data, data services. So we are not doing that, but in that sense as well. So uh, as um, fellow Americans said, um, uh, this guy helped Japan to um, uh, really uh, overcome the Second World War, the economy. Uh, and uh, he said that uh, without data, we are just another person with an opinion. Uh, data will be probably be uh, the oil of the 21st century, uh, but like oil that needs to be refined to have value, we also need to refine data to provide added value services. We get uh, we are getting a, a bunch amount of data right now that we don't know what to do with it. We need to refine it and to give it value. And uh, and um, and in in, in a, to summarize in a more Catalan way, what does that mean? And uh, this is a fellow uh, uh, priest here in Catalonia. He told me once this, and I think he's totally right. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll be uh, happy to answer any of the questions you have on our strategy uh, for Catalonia for the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pujnero. And we will travel a little bit from, from Catalonia to Asia. And uh, the next speaker is Mr. Teng Chang Kim, Senior State Minister for Industry, Commerce, Small and Medium Enterprise and Transportation, Standing Committee at Sengalor State Government, that he will explain us about this smart Selangor. Please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to present you the uh, smart slang or that we have uh, embarked on uh, about a year ago. And uh, let me introduce uh, my state, the state of Selangor. If you have been to uh, Malaysia, you have been to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, in fact, Kuala Lumpur was uh, Selangor's uh, capital city until the year of 1974, when we handed over Kuala Lumpur to become the federal capital. So when you arrive in Kuala Lumpur, you are actually uh, landing in the state of Selangor. So surrounding, Selangor, uh, surrounding Kuala Lumpur, there are 12 cities in Selangor itself. And in Selangor, we do not talk about smart city, we talk about smart state. Because our state, uh, the size of the state is about 8,000 square kilometer, and all the cities are close to each other. And I always describe it is possible to cross the boundaries of four cities in Selangor within half an hour. So it is only sensible economically to have a smart state program rather than a smart cities. And we are the most advanced uh, state in Malaysia, uh, contributing 23% of the national GDP. And our uh, total investment is USD 44B in terms of the uh, uh, foreign investment and the domestic investment. And we are the most urbanized uh, state in Malaysia with 91.4% of the states urbanized. And in our program, the, our initiative of uh, Smart Slangor, we have four pillars, innovations, connectivity, social unity, and sustainability. And this will be the principle uh, that uh, 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 supporting our Smart Slangor program. And we have actually uh, looking at the trail domains. The reason why we have chosen 12 instead of 10 or 20 is because we have 12 cities. So initially we thought that uh, every city will, have, uh, will embark on one of these uh, uh, domains. But uh, eventually when it comes to implementations, we think that it is more practical if we can privatize uh, in three domains. Uh, namely, uh, the, on the innovations, uh, we have a program, early intervention program, and this is yet to, to roll out. But in terms of connectivity, uh, we have this smart slangor bus, which is a free bus service. We have this Wi-Fi smart slangor, 
uh, and we have this pothole reporting and repair system. We call it uh, intelligent report system. And social community, we have this program of uh, community opinion online. We call it cool, whereby the elected uh, representative will have uh, uh, will have to provide the information about the activities uh, through this program, and it will be interactive. And through here, we also collect the opinion, the public opinion, so that we can use uh, the public opinion, the data, uh, in deciding, in making our policies. And this, uh, we have uh, started uh, pilot programs in uh, three uh, state constituencies. And soon, we are uh, implementing all the 56 constituencies. And we have this smart slang of command center, uh, whereby all the, uh, we have collected the, uh, for example, the uh, air pollutant index, uh, we have planned to install 80 uh, devices to collect the actual figure, the real-time figure, so that it will be uh, useful for the state uh, administrations. And of course, the disaster relief center uh, will fully will use this uh, data and all the information obtained from this uh, control center. And sustainability, uh, we have this program of cleaning up our one of the main river in uh, Selangor, which is Klang River, uh, with uh, programs, with sensors uh, uh, installed so that uh, it will be more efficient in the whole effort of cleaning up the river. And we have this smart uh, waste management, whereby uh, out of the 12 cities, three have actually uh, used this system uh, to track the garbage truck so that to improve our garbage collections. And I would like to uh, highlight one of this uh, initiative, which is our smart slang of bus. This is a free bus service for, uh, provided by the state government. Uh, it started two and a half years ago. We started in uh, 1st July 2015. Uh, initially, we uh, have uh, three uh, roads with uh, 11 buses. And for the half year from 1st July to uh, 31st December 2015, the ridership was about 1 million. And thereafter, in the year of 2016, the ridership increased to 4.3 million. And by the first half of this year, the ridership has reached 4.2 million, and we estimate that it will go up to uh, 10 million uh, riderships. And this is free bus provided by the state government. Uh, this is one of the solutions to uh, tackle our traffic congestion problem. And because of its popularity, now we have, in fact, uh, 100 buses provided by the state government from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily, with a frequencies in city area of every 50 minutes, one bus. Uh, and beside that, one of the cities has actually provided another 22 buses for that particular city, Petaling Jaya. So altogether, the state provides uh, 100 free buses uh, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and one of the cities, one of the cities, Patang Jaya, provide 22 buses, uh, altogether with 122 buses, with 10 million of, uh, of riderships, uh, 30, 34 routes, and with 1,300 uh, bus stops. And this is one of the smart uh, solution, uh, which is non-digital. So we need to further upgrades to scale up. And therefore, now we have a system called Selangor Intelligent Transport System, whereby through the apps, through the handphone, the passengers will be able to know the, uh, uh, why, where are the buses, uh, the estimate time of arrival of the buses to the stations, uh, and the schedules for all the 1,300 uh, 1, uh, bus stops and the nearest bus stop locator. And of course, we have the, all the rules and schedule uh, on handphone. So this is... Uh, 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 from non-digital smart solution, and we scale up to digital smart solutions. And these are the key opportunities in, in futures. This is what we are going to do uh, to uh, digital technology uh, about the passengers profiling. Uh, we are going to put in more electric bus, and of course, that we will try. We will try through the data collect, uh, collected. We will improve on the route optimizations and the real-time bus optimizations. So next, these are the opportunities uh, for investors, for startups, uh, because these are the uh, plans for future scaling up. So hopefully, that will be uh, to your interest, and I, I hope that uh, 
uh, more startups will be interested in our program and participate in a uh, whole initiative of Smart Selangor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, we'll keep in, in Asia, quite near Selangor. Uh, we have the representative from Singapore, Rebecca, Ms. Rebecca Lim, Director of Adoption and Engagement Dictatorate, the Smart Nation and Digital Government Office from the Prime Minister Office of the Republic of Singapore. She will talk to us about the Smart Nation program of Singapore. Please. Thank you, Daniel. Good afternoon, everyone. You've heard my uh, fellow panelists uh, speak about uh, smart city and uh, smart state. Singapore is uh, in a bit of a unique situation because we are both a city and a state. Some of you may already know my country very well, especially that building that looks like it has a boat on the top of it. Do I click the slide? Uh, Singapore is in the middle of a thriving Asia-Pacific region, and we are very small. We are so small that we are even smaller than the city of New York, Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx, Richmond put together. That's how small we are. In fact, we are so small that some of our neighbours refer to us very affectionately as the little red dot. So being both a city and a nation, our ambition when we started on our smart journey has always been to be a smart nation. Uh, some of you may know this man, he's my Prime Minister, and this is what he said when we launched our Smart Nation program three years ago. And there he is again, talking about Smart Nation, just very recently, earlier this year. So it seems like we are on the theme of bosses here uh, today. Um, so I'm not just putting him there because he's our big boss, but I think one of the biggest advantages um, that Singapore has in our Smart Nation initiative is that both our Smart City and our Smart Nation strategy is driven by the big boss himself. Our Prime Minister is our biggest advocate, and he's a strong believer in Smart Nation. And I think we can agree that uh, strong leadership, good governance, and the ability to drive a strong strategy from the centre and coordinate across government agencies is a critical success factor for driving a successful Smart Nation strategy. So um, I'm from the Smart Nation and Digital Government Office, which is a mouthful. Uh, we are a unit under the Prime Minister's Office that drives the strategy for Singapore's Smart Nation. And uh, we are also responsible for driving coordination and collaboration across our government agencies on the many smart initiatives we have in our country. So maybe that's why we look a little crazy in this slide. So what is Singapore's smart nation ambition about? Um, it is about taking full advantage of technology to create convenience. At the most fundamental level, Smart Nation is about leveraging technology to um, build convenience for citizens uh, in day-to-day -day activities, be it parking, making a payment, knowing when your bus is going to be arriving so that you won't be late for work. At the broader level, though, it is about creating enterprise efficacy. This is about leveraging data, sensors, to guide business decisions or to help businesses achieve uh, cost savings through digitization. And this is so that our businesses can create innovative products and services and to scale and to become globally competitive. Most importantly to us, Smart Nation is about opportunities. It's about opportunities that's been brought about by the fourth industrial revolution, by the digital revolution. It is so that we can continue to create jobs and opportunities for the future. So let me talk a little bit about some of the advantages of being both a smart city and a smart nation. I've covered two points already, which is that Singapore is very small. Being small, we are compact and we have a digitally literate uh, population. We have a single layer of government driving all our smart initiatives. And we have also made investments in infrastructure so that our citizens enjoy a high-speed connectivity. And there is a very high smartphone penetration rate in Singapore. Uh, about 9 in 10 Singaporeans have access to a smartphone, and our smartphone penetration rate is about 150%, which I believe is one of the highest in the world. Uh, we have a pool of uh, talent 
who are trained and who perform well in sciences, technology, engineering professions. And we have a growing group of Infocom professionals in Singapore. We have a vibrant uh, startup and innovation ecosystem uh, of both local companies as well as international companies based in Singapore. And we have an open data network system uh, with private sector leveraging on government data to drive new services and products. And let's talk a little bit about government systems itself. This is the new fourth terminal at Changi International Airport. Those of you who travel widely uh, may have been through our airport. Uh, we were one of the um, pioneers globally to leverage technology and biometrics for automated customs clearance. Uh, existing in infrastructure such as this puts us in a good position for our smart nation journey. We've had e-filing of income tax for, I think, about 18 years now. And our libraries started RFID tagging our books way back in 1998. And we were one of the first countries in the world to have entire library collection that's RFID tagged. So technology is something that we have always embraced as a nation. So then what's next? What do we see the role of government um, as what can the government do in further pushing the smart nation drive? Uh, first and foremost, we see the government driving a digital economy, which is fueled by new opportunities, and a government that utilizes technology to better serve citizens. And most importantly, we want to achieve a digital society where citizens live, play, and work better. I've talked about infrastructure, ensuring that we put in the right digital infrastructure. Policies, rules and regulation, ensuring that we have the right rules and policy in place, be it data governance, cybersecurity, but not rules that impede technology adoption. Focusing everyone's efforts on the right use cases that will deliver real user benefits to the people and to businesses. And when it comes to government systems itself, to be a smart buyer with a good understanding of technology so that we can meaningfully engage the private sector. And last but not least, to create spaces for innovation and experimentation. In the immediate months, we are focusing on several key strategic national projects. Um, these are long-term systemic investments that we are making to build interoperable infrastructure some of which the private sector will be able to leverage on uh, to create innovative products and services. So I will just uh, won't spend too much time. Um, my time is running out. A national digital identity framework, e-payments, a smart nation sensor platform to accelerate the deployment of IoT devices, make our city more livable and secure. Smart urban mobility. Everyone's talked about transport and how important it is to a city. Um, and moments of life, which is a a way to drive government services to citizens at particular moments of his life so that he only needs to transact one time and not with multiple agencies. So at the same time, our government agencies have also been um, implementing smart city type solutions that more immediately impact and improve the lives of citizens. Uh, we have digital parking, we have a first responder app that uh, allows someone who's in the vicinity of someone who needs first aid to come and render aid. We have a one service app which automatically um, channels feedback for municipal issues to the right agencies. And I spoke a little bit already about data.gov.sg which is our open data network. So in order to design and deliver citizen-centric products and services, we actively engage our citizens, we get feedback, we collect data, and we iterate our services to improve upon them. So what are some of our challenges? I think um, a key challenge in being ready to become a smart nation is getting your people ready to be in the smart nation. We have the initiatives in place, we are building the infrastructure. What we also need to do is to invest in skilling, reskilling and upskilling our people to ensure that our workers are prepared for a future when work is going to be very different. And the digital skills that a select few have today um, will eventually become as commonplace as being able to speak or write well. We have launched programs such as our Skills Future and Tech Skills Accelerator, which provides subsidies and opportunities for professionals to learn new skills throughout their entire career. 
The message is that your career may not just be one job, one career in the future. You will need to constantly learn and relearn and to adapt. And of course, if we look at the, the different segments, we have kids and we also have elderly. So we have a series of programs that uh, cater the curriculum to elderly folks. We engage senior citizens as volunteers to teach other senior citizens how to adopt technology and how to use apps that may be relevant to them in their lifestyle. So we've talked about how cities and countries are becoming more connected in the future. And I think herein lies an opportunities for all of us as cities, smart cities, smart nations, smart regions, or smart states to work better together. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Rebecca. And uh, we will travel back to Europe. Uh, in this case, with uh, to the Netherlands, uh, Ms. Henriette Bercy from Deputy Director for Special Development at the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment of the Netherlands Government, that will talk us about the Netherlands Smart City Strategy. Please come to the stage. Thank you very much for give, giving me the opportunity to say a few words about uh, the Netherlands and smart cities in the Netherlands. I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to say something to you on this very interesting Congress I visit for the first uh, time. First, uh, I would like to, to give you some information about the Netherlands because uh, the char characteristics of the Netherlands are very important also in relation to the government. Uh, we are a relatively small country with a total population of 17 million people. And you can say, more or less, uh, we are a densely populated uh, country or we are a scarcely populated uh, city. Our capital city is uh, Amsterdam with more than 800,000 uh, inhabitants. And uh, we have a very important port, we have an important airport. And so uh, smart spatial planning always has been very important for the Netherlands. As you can also see in the sheet is that 30% of our territory is be below sea level and 60% of our territory is, uh, consists of flood risks, which means that we uh, are uh, yeah, created uh, 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 out of the water and in in that sense, again, uh, spatial planning has been very important over centuries. We also have reclaimed a lot of land. When you look at the urban uh, regions in the Netherlands, uh, we don't have one big city, as already mentioned. Uh, Amsterdam has more than 800,000 uh, inhabitants, but we are um, uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, polycentric uh, 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 cities. Uh, we have Amsterdam, we have Utrecht, we have Rotterdam, um, and um, we have The Hague, where I come from. The national government is seated uh, there. And that are the four uh, most important uh, 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 cities in uh, our, uh, uh, our land, all to the west. And very important for the success of the cities is, uh, the, the, are the linkages between the cities. Uh, uh, because when you have a polycentric uh, structure, it is very important that uh, you'll be, you travel easy from Amsterdam to Rotterdam, uh, to Utrecht, but also to other parts of uh, the country. Uh, you can also see uh, that also in the north, in the east, and in the south, we have uh, 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 urban regions uh, which are important also for our economy. When we look at the challenges, and I'm, I'm talking about the perspective of spatial planning, if you look at the challenges uh, we are facing in the Netherlands now, is uh, urbanization. Uh, what I said, we have small cities, but they are growing faster over the last uh, years. Like in many countries, young people start their education in the city and uh, never return. Uh, which means that uh, in, the, 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 uh, in the boundaries, in the, the countryside uh, of uh, our 
city, uh, we uh, um, are facing more and more an aging population. Uh, that's not only because uh, people go from uh, uh, the countryside to the net to uh, the cities, but also because uh, we have uh, less children than in other parts uh, of the world. Aging population you have in Europe everywhere, um, uh, but uh, not so much in other parts uh, of. Uh, um, uh, of the world and aging population also uh, is a problem in uh, when you look at the labor force the labor force in the Netherlands is already diminishing so that means that we should be more that we should be more smart because uh, we still have to earn our money of course climate change is important uh, for the Netherlands as I already mentioned uh, we are below sea level 30 percent of our our land, and that's the land where we have the main uh, cities. Uh, so we uh, invest a lot uh, in smart ways to protect us from the water. And it's not only water coming from uh, sea level rise, but also water coming from uh, the sky because it rains more, and also water coming from the rivers from Germany and, and Bel uh, Belgium. Um, uh, the melting snow in Switzerland also amounts to uh, uh, water problems uh, in the Netherlands. So we have to protect ourselves and we invest hugely in that. Digitalization is a challenge, but it's of course also a solution for challenges. Uh, digitalization, uh, when you look at the role of the government, uh, investing uh, in the infrastructure is very important, uh, but also um, uh, the education is important because I think uh, we can talk about smart uh, nations, we can talk about smart cities, but is it not everything about smart citizens and uh, being able to participate in modern cities and nations? Mobility already mentioned. Uh, uh, to you is a very important challenge in the Netherlands. We had an uh, uh, economic crisis, we are recovering, and now suddenly we have already again our roads full of. Uh, cars again, so we have to uh, look at that. I'm also looking at the time, so I have to be fast. Energy transition is important in the Netherlands. We are very behind our target uh, on renewables, but space is a problem in that sense. The Netherlands is still work in progress. We all work together in all layers of uh, government, national government, local government, uh, province, provinces, uh, municipalities, also water boards. Uh, uh, we have um, what we are working now is, uh, uh, from the national uh, point of view, uh, at, uh, working at one law in which we combine uh, the, all legislation uh, related to the physical uh, environment. And then we have legislation about transport, environment, spatial planning, uh, her cultural heritage, everything which you can see, for instance, uh, is being part of uh, that legislation. And the idea is that that legislation will give more space to to initiative, to particular initiatives, but also more space to uh, municipalities and um, uh, provinces. And I have to go, but faster. I will finish with the National Smart Strategy. Uh, this was uh, designed uh, this year, and the uh, nice thing about, we think, uh, this strategy is that it's not driven by the national governments, but by the cities and companies itself. Uh, it's, uh, the strategy is a sort of commitment of uh, f uh, the five largest cities of the Netherlands and uh, a lot of companies to work together on solutions, to exchange information, to create a platform. And of course, uh, the, ne the Netherlands government will, the, on national level, will be uh, uh, also part of it, but only in as invited uh, by the cities and the companies. To conclude, uh, perhaps in a, in a, in a, a new instrument uh, in the Netherlands, what we have designed is what we call a city deal. And a city deal is a deal between the national government and some cities, uh, it can be five cities, it can be ten cities, uh, in tackling one problem. There, not everything is already uh, being uh, put in policy on the national level and on invitation of the cities itself. Uh, the national government can engage in uh, together tackling uh, problems. And then, I'll, for example, we have a city deal on climate change adaptation in cities. We have a city deal on how to build more in cities itself because of the shortage of the, uh, the housing markets uh, in the housing markets in cities. So, even if there is no policy. 
um, there can be a deal made uh, between the national government and, and, and cities. And I have to finish now, and so I would like to invite you to visit uh, the Holland Lounge uh, in the exhibition where you can meet uh, the cities who, are, uh, uh, who have drafted the Smart City uh, strategy and also meet the companies uh, who are there to share their, uh, their knowledge and also their experiences with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Harriet. Thank you to all of you. It was a very nice travel through different regions and, and nations with very, very smart power uh, on that. Uh, we have uh, some time, 12 minutes for Q&A. Uh, anyone in the room that wants to make a question to our speakers? There, there are some microphones uh, over there. You need to go stand up, go to the mic, and uh, tell us. Also, we have uh, here uh, from the Ask Can You app, uh, the ones that you have used uh, during the session. I will start uh, and uh, remember, anyone that wants to ask, please go to the microphones. The dilemma or slogan from the Smart City Expo this year is empowering the cities. Normally, I, the citizens, please, the citizens. Normally, uh, citizens are living in cities, are the city halls and the public servants from the cities uh, assumed to be more closer to the cities. What happened in the regional or national government? How it's, it's uh, really relevant to engage the citizens as you talk in your presentations in the program. How did you do? And it's more difficult from a national or regional government to engage the citizen than in a city uh, scope. You have microphones here if you want. Jordi, please. Well, I think there is no difference in, in difficulty, it's just a matter of mentality and a change of culture. Um, I think the way we've uh, managed, we've governed our cities and our territories in the past um, have been in a way in which citizens used to participate just once every four years. And there was elected people would take decisions on whatever things would happen on the cities or on their nations. I think that will change uh, and it's already changing. And uh, that means that we have the opportunity to, uh, instead of fighting against our citizens, to making them uh, contribute into managing uh, our cities and our territories. Um, we have the tools, and, uh, and we are seeing uh, today that uh, sometimes people that govern a city or govern a state or a region, they, uh, they uh, know that uh, something is going wrong somewhere because there's a Twitter hashtag of many people uh, saying so, and not by its own systems to detect that problem. That means uh, the way uh, we need to address the issue of uh, citizen empowerment is uh, very important. I think we need to count on the citizens. I think there is more intelligence out there than inside our offices. So let's try to uh, include all this intelligence in helping uh, design the solutions for uh, all the citizens. In our strategy, in the Catalonia Smart Strategy, this is uh, one of the key issues. And we have several projects, which obviously I didn't have time to explain, in how we have uh, transformed, on how are we transforming our citizens, uh, instead of being passive actors, into decision makers. And I think that's uh, a key issue uh, in the way we will manage and govern um, our cities, our nations in the, in the near future. Any, any other? Please. Uh, in fact, the success of the smart cities, uh, the citizen participation is a key. Without the citizen participation, we'll, we, there will be no hope of uh, getting any success. And therefore, in the state of Selangor, what we've done is from the very beginning, uh, in preparing the blueprint, we have involved in the uh, uh, engagement with the public. So we have rounds of uh, we have, uh, round tables, round of discussions with the stakeholders, with the NGOs, 
and, and with the elected representatives. So we, will, we make sure that uh, in this process, we get the maximum uh, citizen participations. And on top of that, now, as I mentioned just now, we have one program uh, under the social uh, unity, uh, whereby we have this uh, cool, the community opinion online, whereby the citizen will have a direct uh, interactions with the elected representatives. So it is now a uh, constituency space where the uh, elected representative will have to provide the information of the government policies, their own activities uh, uh, to the citizens, and then they will collect the feedback from the people. So that will be uh, collecting the uh, public opinions in our uh, decision making. So this is constant base. We hope to have this expanded to the city base and perhaps also to the council, local council base. So this is in the progress now. Okay. Um, certainly, I think uh, citizens' engagement is very important and uh, it's never about the technology. It is about the people and the businesses and what you can use the technology to achieve for the people and the businesses. So in Singapore, we have uh, many different ways of engaging citizens. Uh, you saw that we use community groups to reach out to other community groups to uh, help drive technology adoption. Uh, what is a bit more challenging for us in terms of a smart nation strategy? Uh, the smart city solutions, those that are, you know, transportation apps, uh, waste management, solving municipal issues, I think those are very easy for citizens to adopt and to understand the benefits because it hits them very immediately. You roll out digital parking, straight away they feel the benefits. Uh, but what is a little bit more challenging is in terms of communicating a national strategy because a lot of the, the things that we are trying to do in our national strategy is long term and it's about building uh, big infrastructure pieces that are systemic and it might take a while before you can actually uh, feel the immediate benefits as a citizen. So that is something that we're working very hard on uh, because uh, certainly engagement is not one way, it's not just government talking to citizens or taking feedback, it has to be an iterative process, uh, a cycle and uh, the communication and the engagement needs to be a constant loop. Feedback, iteration, more feedback. What have we done with your feedback? Thank you. In the Netherlands, um, we have worked already for many years on what we call the bottom-up approach uh, uh, with pilots, uh, with all kind of experiments inviting the public, uh, the public and also the private sector uh, with uh, uh, inviting for projects, um, supporting uh, local groups. Every municipality does it on its own way. And uh, I think that um, bottom up and top down both are uh, applicable at the same time because also you have to, to, to bear in mind that uh, not everyone is active. And if you uh, solely work uh, with a bottom up approach, uh, you um, uh, perhaps forgot the people who don't have time uh, to invest in your projects. So that's, I think, the role of uh, the government to, to, to really uh, look uh, for initiatives and, 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 and inviting people but at the same time uh, look at uh, uh, the people who don't have a voice or don't or are too busy or um, have other things on their minds so we are working both bottom-up and top-down at the same time perfect thank, thank you uh, we have uh, some questions from the ask a new application one directly to Rebecca uh, from ISAR uh, are there any private funded or PPP a structured project uh, initiative in a Singapore program, funded, private funded project or PPP in the initiative from the program? So the five strategic national projects I talked about earlier on in my presentations uh, are government funded projects. But we have uh, many initiatives uh, across uh, Singapore that are actually a result of uh, collaboration between government and private sector and people sector. Uh, we have a very vibrant uh, innovation uh, you know, system in, in Singapore. And uh, we have, for example, um, the artificial intelligence uh, community. 
is a, a collaboration between uh, Singapore government's uh, a research uh, body as well as uh, private companies. Okay, <clears throat> another one that goes to Jordi and, and Harriet, but uh, it's about the, uh, it's uh, Dominique that wants to ask about the collaboration between the government with the cities, uh, how it has been orchestrated, and if, if there is any uh, agreement or document to sign from the cities to join the, the strategy. Yeah, what we've done uh, in that sense, which was one of the first initiatives, uh, because obviously things were happening in cities, and, um, I mean, and, and, we, and we want that to happen. But uh, as well, we wanted that all these initiatives were somehow coordinated and uh, that other cities could take advantages of those successful stories. And also something which sometimes mayors are afraid of, which is explaining failure projects. Sometimes we learn more from a failure project than from a successful project. So, but obviously, uh, uh, when you have a, a failure project in somewhere, nobody wants to explain it. So uh, we have to be very careful on that. Uh, so what we did is um, we created uh, a, what we call Catalonia Smart Lab. It's a, um, um, it's a, a network of uh, uh, urban labs. That is, we identified all those cities which were uh, more advanced in, uh, in terms of being a smart city. Uh, we, we mapped all the projects that's online. Uh, every city is uh, maintaining the information together with us, and, uh, and that gives us um, a first view on how we are. And it's good also for all those cities uh, which are not doing anything yet uh, to see what can they do. The other thing, uh, we are using this network uh, of uh, cities uh, coordinated by the government is uh, with the companies. Usually we have uh, many Catalan companies and companies from abroad, they have very not innovative products uh, or solutions which they want to test in a real-time environment. So um, those cities which are already advanced uh, on, uh, or very keen on, uh, on having parts of the cities for testing that technology, we match offer and demand so that uh, the company that wants to test that technology has a city which has uh, maybe uh, can explain the problems they want to solve. So what we do is we match them, and um, and the only conditions we 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 put on both of them is that uh, the company puts the technology for free for a year. The city uh, uh, pays for uh, the installation of the uh, whatever needs to be installed, and they all both uh, can um, share the results of that uh, pilot test. Which means that, that if the mayor uh, then sees that that's successful for the city, that's good for the city, because sometimes we all know that so sometimes companies, they all say uh, the product is the best, no? But uh, when you test it, sometimes it's not the way you thought it was. So um, that's good for mayors, because then they, uh, they see how useful that technology is. Sometimes they are afraid of testing it. It's good for the companies, they can test on real-time environments, and that usually ends uh, finally after one year in an open contract in which that company can apply to and has also some opportunities in terms of uh, be, the be the winner of that contract. So uh, I think that uh, has, has been working quite well uh, in Catalonia, and we have many cities engaged on this, uh, in this Catalonia Smart Labs network, uh, which is helping on that purpose, on accelerating smart city solutions in our, in our cities. Thank you, Jordi. Harriet, in the, in the case of the Netherlands, has been easy uh, the relationship with the cities and the cities itself, and the cities with the, with the company, or which travels do you found in the Yeah, it's always, <laughs> in the of course, uh, the, uh, difficult to say from the national point of view, from the national governments, that the relations with cities uh, are very good. So, uh, but from our point of view, uh, it is. Um, we have in the Netherlands a, a clear division of what is the authority of municipalities and provinces uh, and uh, the national government, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't talk about it uh, and can talk about uh, common projects. So uh, what we have uh, is, uh, for instance, with my minister, uh, regular meetings uh, with, um, 
with uh, uh, the, 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 the governments uh, of the cities, uh, or they are represented, uh, in which uh, the, U uh, the plans uh, of the national governments uh, are being discussed. And, um, and when we talk about investments, uh, we have an infrastructure fund uh, which is uh, spent on infrastructure, of course, and that's uh, always in uh, um, yeah, good cooperation uh, with uh, the cities and other companies. So, yeah, I think in the Netherlands uh, that uh, we are a, a country which, what I already said, we were below sea level and that meant that means that we always have to work uh, closely uh, together. So, uh, yeah, companies, um, research institutions, uh, uh, cities, national governments, um, they can find each other quite easy. And, um, uh, in that sense, uh, I think they can learn also a lot uh, from each other. Thank you very much. We are all out of time. Uh, thank you very much to all, all the speakers. It was really, really interesting and amazing the things that you are doing in your states and, and regions. And uh, <clears throat> let's remember, the regions and the states are really a good role in the smart space for, to collaborate with companies, with cities, and we will see more and more in the years in the smart cities. Thank you very much to all.